Welcome back to Whiskey Acumen. Uh, with Josh again, here with my buddy Andrew. Today we kind of have an impromptu tasting of this Springbank 12 cat strength. Um, recently Andrew discovered the Springbank 18 with myself at a bar. He was a fan. I picked this up. I told him I had cracked it open about a month ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to taste it for the first time. It is cat strength. We got some water. You might want to add to that. It's coming in at 57.1% alcohol by volume. So we'll get into it. Um, nose, taste, finish. I'll give it a score. If Andrew's comfortable, you can do the same. Absolutely, yeah. And then we'll go into value for money. Uh, so let's get into the nose. Let's see what yeah. you get. Real quick, I just want to add that when he wanted to do a video, I was skeptical. Um, I'm more of a novice compared to Josh. Josh, he's been in it. He has a really good nose with these things. Uh, but when he said spring bank, and he kind of played it, played it down a little bit, when I tried the 18, it was one of the most fantastic whiskeys <laughs> I've tried. Uh, try to get my hands on a 21, um, but uh, yeah, 12, 12, I'm very curious about this, so I'm happy to be here trying to taste this with you. So, yeah. we'll see what we get. So yeah, uh, we did try to find the 21 in December, um, and no, November, mm -hmm. and it was <laughs> exceptionally hard. We found one in Southern California that we could find, and it was definitely overpriced. It's like $460? Yeah. Yeah. It's a little too much. And I apologize for the dog in the background. I can't really control that. All right. So get into the nose and see what we pick up. Right away, the sherry pops out. Even though it's not much, uh, excuse me, it's not uh, exclusively mature in sherry, it definitely pops out like it is. Get the slight peak on there because it's like a heavy a little, peak. little bit yeah not as much as i expected and I, i'm smelling some some cinnamon mm -hmm. ish yeah you get that cinnamon spice for sure you get like a vegetable note in here that uh, spring bank funk sometimes comes off as like that vegetable note you get a little bit of like damp wood but not to the extent i've been picking up on those the freuds recently Vanilla caramel coming from that bourbon cast. I'm really enjoying the, the, the smell. Yeah, yeah, on the nose, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. But we'll see how the palate works out. You said it. You said it's a little peated, and I, I'm not the biggest fan of peat. Um, <laughs> He's coming around. I, I, I'm coming around, but I'm a little hesitant about what it's going to be on the palate. It's very nice. I got like a little lavender. We'll dive into the palate and we'll add a little bit of water to this uh, and see we'll get a small sip at first. Right. Spring bank is so unique. I'm curious to see his reaction first. <laughs> it does come off hot. <laughs> it, it, it does it is hot it being castrated and um what was the percentage 57.1 57, 57. Yeah. yeah that explains it right <laughs> yeah it's pretty hot however once that hotness settles it's the classic spring break mm -hmm. it's, it's so good mm -hmm. it's you do taste a little sherry i don't even though it's not but uh it's sherry but it's, it's, it's sweet really it has the sweetness that comes in at the perfect time yeah and I love that about spring break. Yeah. And then, and like, the 18 we tried, it wasn't as hot, no. smoother, but there's a lot of familiar, there's a lot of um, similarities, similarities yeah. between the two. So I, I, I really like this, actually. Definitely. So it's unique with the spring bank that a lot of sweeter whiskeys, even like the sherry sweetness, it hits you up front. The spring bank, it doesn't. Initially, you kind of get that spring bank funk that sits on the tongue. It's a very unique flavor, like a damp kind of wood. And then when you start to chew on it and swallow, it hits you with a very creamy sweetness. And you do get those classic sherry notes because it is partially matured sherry cast. You get the raisin, you get the walnut, you get the hazelnut, and you get some of those plums and figs and stuff. Uh, but you also get fresher, fresher fruits in there. You get some pear and some apple, a little bit of cherry. Uh, and then like a brown sugar cinnamon swirl with that peat, that's like a sweet peat. 
Yeah, it's a sweet pea. <laughs> and, uh, and it goes down really smooth. And the finish is really long. It's still going right now. Mm -hmm. 12 years old. Not as long as the long log of wood 12 cast strength, but uh, I kind of pick up some of the similarities in that cinnamon swirl that high ABV is bringing. So, mm -hmm. and a question coming from like a less experienced person, does the lasting uh, taste of these whiskeys does the ABV have an influence on how long it lasts, or is it like the peat? Are there stronger ways? The cast strength maybe was making it longer. Do you have any idea? From my experience, yes, usually. And the age and the alcohol percentage will influence the finish and obviously the, the potency of the flavors. That's one thing that I, I think a lot of people as they get further into the whiskey journey, they gravitate towards cast strength because those flavors pop out. So you go from this to like a 40% and they feel kind of dull and muted, especially side by side. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah, because this, this whiskey, I it's lasting longer than most, right. like especially for a twelve-year-old. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm like, like, what is it? What's creating this? It could be the cast strength or the higher ABV. Yeah. So it's the higher ABV that has a probably higher ABV. Yeah. I think Springbank does a good job of sourcing quality active casks. Mm -hmm. I think that has a lot to do with it. And I'll be honest, I think peat kind of adds to that because like mm -hmm. a younger peat will tend to have a longer, more complex finish than a younger sherry cask. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add some water. I'll let yeah. you do the same. Yes, let's just do a it. little bit. I actually really like this neat, but you know, the cool thing about cast strength is you get to bring it down and explore how these things open up. So, just sit here, we'll give it another nose, another taste, and then uh, we'll give it a score and talk about the value for money. So, I'll start, I'll let Andrew finish. So right away I get more sweetness on the nose, but it's a little lighter already, more cherry. That brown sugar's coming up now. A little bit of syrupy, but it's like a lot. I, I may have put a little bit big dash of water in here. Seems a little light now on the nose, but still very pleasant. I'm getting now some citrus fruit. Yeah, sugary sweetness. That peat on the nose for me is gone, but it could just be me acclimating to the peat. What about you? What are you getting? Well, it's definitely more muted yeah. after I put some water in. I did, usually we do a drop or two. I put in a lot more than that. But, <laughs> so I muted it, muted the smell, but I'm still getting the sweetness. Mm -hmm. However, the peat, that the little bit I had is like gone. It's gone. Um, and it still smells great. Like when you smell it, with water and you start getting it it's uh, similar to what you taste when you when you when the sweetness comes in yeah. so that's why so that I'm curious to know how it's gonna taste now okay. I'm sure it's gonna just the hotness is gonna drop and then it's just gonna um, it's all sweetness let's find out let's go into it still has a kick in the end but you get that sherry sweetness up front now it's more citrusy now a little more vanilla and the finish is more pepper yeah it kind of made it spicier even though we brought down the ABV mm -hmm. it's definitely spicier mm -hmm. the peat's definitely softer mm -hmm. but um, still a quality drink I personally prefer neat believe it or not but um, I've acclimated to these higher ABVs. Well, I it was smooth with the water. It, like the hotness did drop a little bit. Mm -hmm. It did have a little little kick. The the like pepper spice there came in came in at the end. Yeah. That and that's something I didn't realize. Maybe because the higher ABV drowned that out a little bit, but it, it was more present. Um, sweetness was still there. Yeah. Still really great. You know, I'm gonna have to agree with you. Usually I would on this. But I like, I preferred it neat yeah. over the water. Only because the flavors kind of popped a little more mm -hmm. and it lasted longer. Yeah. So, and bear in mind, Andrew came in without a clean palate. He didn't have a, any kind of whiskey to warm up. So he came in fresh to a 57.1. So it's going to come off hot, but he's still able to sip it neat. And uh, Campbelltown whiskey is not exactly the smoothest whiskey, um, but flavorful wise, it's, it's really good. 
So we're gonna get into value for money. I don't think you know what I paid for this. This was $120 mm. for a cash drink whiskey. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you, before I get into it, what are your initial impressions for that price? Well, I think for a 12, mm -hmm. initial reactions, it's high. It's a little bit high for a 12. Mm -hmm. um, but when you start getting into cash screens, from my little experience, mm -hmm. it, that's when they start hiking them up. Um, yeah. I, you know, there's a few out there that are cash strength and they're a little pricey, mm -hmm. but they tend to be better. I think people know that cash strengths tend to be a little more rich in the flavor and lasting, um, so people are not afraid of that. I don't think, I mean, my the way it, it tasted and it was just so good that the number he was gonna throw out, I wouldn't be shocked if you would have said like 150. Like it wouldn't be like, oh man, it's not. It's still really good whiskey. Yeah. Even though it's a higher price for a 12. Yeah. I mean, it is a higher price for a 12, but when you, like you said, you think about the cast strength, they're not releasing as many. First of all, Springbank's are already smaller distillery. They don't mm -hmm. have the production quality of some of these other massive distilleries. And then when you're bottling something at 57, percent you're running out of your whiskey your product a lot faster mm -hmm. so i actually think it's tremendously good value for money the long one 12 is a little bit higher um at the cash strength of course mm -hmm. um so and i think that's pretty good value for money as well so mm -hmm. i do think it's good value for money i recommend anyone try this even if you're not a fan of pete campbelltown pete is not as harsh as isla pete you don't have that medicinal quality uh, it's different, definitely different, and it doesn't smack you in the face, especially if your first impression of peat is like a Ardbeg 10 or a Laphoric 10, and that's, uh, it catches a lot of people off guard, I think, I've warned people, hey, this is smoky, and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I like smoky drinks, <laughs> and they're thinking of a smoky cocktail, uh, it's not the same, <laughs> it's not the same. I think I'm under that category. I remember the first time you gave me Lagavulin. Yeah, <laughs> it kicked me. It, it, it really, uh, it really hit me hard. Uh, so, but, uh, but it didn't turn me off. I think uh, now coming back, going full circle, mm -hmm. trying it now in these peats. Uh, you know, I don't mind the Lagavulin. Yeah. However, if you when we say peat, and you're not maybe you're not a fan of a Lagavulin, maybe like I was, like I wasn't the biggest fan. Uh, but this is a different, like Josh said, it's a different type of peat. There's a lot of sweetness to it, and it, it makes a whole different experience because of that sweetness, in my opinion. Okay. So, um, I have to agree. Um, so, I apologize in advance. I'm looking all over the place. This is I'm at Andrew's house, <laughs> and uh, this is the new setup for us. So, uh, I do apologize for that if I'm not making eye contact. But I'm going to give this a score. If Andrew's comfortable, he can do the same. For me, I'm going to go ahead and give this a solid 90 out of 100. Maybe even 91. I'm a big fan. Um, the flavors pop. Uh, comparing it to the 18 is not really fair because they're different maturations, different ABV, but you do pick up similar qualities. Uh, I'd be hard pressed to choose one over the other. Although, if you put a gun in my head, I'd take the 18. <laughs> It's also hard to refine, so there's there's that aspect to it too. Uh, so I don't know if you're comfortable giving the score. Sure, I don't know like how much weight my scores has since you know uh, I haven't compared any other whiskey. However, I am I have been fortunate enough because of Josh and a group of friends that we're with that I've tried some whiskeys, um, higher end whiskeys, so entry level whiskeys. Uh, you know the McKellen Twenty Ones to the Glen I mean uh, Glen. Uh, yeah, so the Glen. Clarkless, Glen Clarkless 25, 25 and, yeah. then I, and then I, and then the latest Glen Going, which is, I love that distillery. Highland Park 21. Yeah, so we, we, you know, I was able to try a lot of whiskeys, and um, this was a pleasant surprise. He didn't hype it up to me like I thought he would <laughs> with something this good. Oh, so okay. this came in as a good surprise to me. Um, however, just you know, just thinking about the, comparing it to other ones. Um, out of 100 I give this at 89 um, only because I mean which is a great score in my yeah, yeah, I, I mean I, like that I think that's a fantastic whiskey um, only because I I had the 18 and that was really good to me <laughs> the hotness wasn't as much a little smoother and, and just my personal opinion is that I like smoother whiskeys over um, something that really pops um, so um, that's why I, mean, I had a, like a point less than you, yeah. but but fantastic twelve year old. Yeah. I mean, Springbank. 
I mean, I'm new to Spring Bay. Yeah. I think it's a fantastic distillery. I think they know what they're doing, and um, I'm still looking for that 21. So. <laughs> yeah. The 21, and then hopefully that 25. Uh, it's just so pricey. Like I know that if you can get it at retail, it's not too bad. But the second it hits the shops, uh, we mark it up, and it's you know, like I said, the 21 we saw was 460-ish dollars, and it was only one we could find. So uh, it became a or is it worth it? And then even kind of principle on that markup, I'm not a fan of that kind of thing. Like, I'm not a big oh, yeah. bourbon guy, but like, mm -hmm. you know, obviously Happy Van Winkle, George C. Stag, those uh, unicorn bourbons do the exact same thing, but to an even greater extent. And I just have a hard time with that. Is it worth it? I mean, I've tried uh, Rip Van Winkle 10. It was really good. Am um, I willing to pay, you know, through the nose for it? Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, like if you liked it, consider uh, subscribing. Always for that. Comment below what you think of the Spring Bank. If you tried it, if you're willing to try it, and I'll catch you guys next time.